Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. I'm, of course, Akaflus, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Path of Champions. Siligence of Terra. I'm going to be giving you my suggested builds for every single Damasia champion here in this video. We're kicking things off with Damasia today because it's a little bit easier to do. There are only three champions in total, so it's not that difficult and not that long to cover. However, I will try to give you everything that I possibly know of these champions and the relics that I'm going for. Now, I will also be going over the common relics here, and essentially, I'll be giving you my thoughts on what I think are the most appropriate common relics on these champions. Alright, without further ado, let's start with the first champion. So surprise, surprise, it is Garen yet again. Now Garen, as I mentioned, is probably one of my favorite champions here in POC, and his relics definitely, definitely do him justice. This is the same build that I went with before, Archangel Staff, Choking Scrum, and Berserker's Buckle. Now for those of you who've seen it before, feel free to skip ahead, timestamp should be on your screen. However, for those of you who missed it, the idea with this is essentially like so. Archangel Staff will refill your mana every round, allowing you to take advantage of the singles combat created by Justice. With the singles combat, you're able to play this and have your Garen strike the enemy. In return, the enemy strikes the Garen back. Now, because the Garen is going to take damage, you're able to trigger the Berserker's Buckle, giving you a plus two, plus two. If you've triggered this many times and long enough, you're going to get a Garen with a really beefy stat, which you can potentially use the Troking's Crown to finish off the game with Overwhelm. Now, in the event that you don't have any of these three relics, you can potentially go with this build, or preferably, if you're lacking one or two relics from the previous build, swap one or two of these out for something else here. Now, I personally enjoy goes Lantern. Garen is the champion that comes on pretty late at 5 cost, therefore he's going to be sitting in your hand for quite some time, so why not give him some extra stat buffs by slapping on a Rigos Lantern on him. Stalker's Blade and Gatebreakers are both pretty good and should be used in tandem if possible, because both of these will strike twice, henceforth allowing Garen to level up on the same turn you're summoned. Stalker's Blade will strike the weakest enemy, whereas the Curator's Gatebreaker will strike the enemy Nexus. Now in terms of common relic suggestions here, I would personally go with a Ginsu's Rage Blade or a Storm Razor or a Troking's Crown, or if you're feeling adventurous go at all three as a build on its own. The reason why I recommend these three relics is because Ginsu's Rage Plate is pretty synergistic with Garen, allowing you to get a plus one plus one whenever you attack, essentially raising his stats for free. Storm is also pretty nice because you are able to attack safely with him courtesy of Quick Attack. And as for the Troking's Crusher, it does the same thing as the Troking's Crown. The only difference here is that Garen's the only one getting the Overwhelm instead. Now let's take a look at his sister now, Laksana. So Laksana is also another champion that I mentioned in yesterday's video. I quite enjoy playing this champion and the build here is pretty decent as well. Ludens Tempest, all your spells and skills still one extra damage is nice because Final Spark here will actually have its damage amped up courtesy of Ludens Tempest. Arcane Combat with Round Start create a fleeting combat in hand is also pretty good because you're able to essentially create a fleeting combat in hand which is a 6 cost spell therefore allowing you to level up the Lux in the next turn if she was on the board. Finally, I went with a Lost Chapter quite simply because I only have a common relic slot but it's still pretty decent because you get to refill mana whenever you summon the Lux which will allow me to keep playing spells. Now there are two relics here that I can personally think of which will be really good with the Luxana here. One of them I have locked, the other one I have unlocked. Let's talk about the locked one first. The relic in question is the Camtech Duplicator as you can see, grayed out over here because I don't own a single copy of it. When you play a spell, if you have 6 plus mana of gems, copy it with the same targets. Now I imagine this would be pretty insane on the Lux, because Lux essentially needs to see you play 6 plus mana of spells to level up. Now usually at this point, you might have 6 mana gems yourself, allowing you to take advantage of the Camtech Duplicator. Now once again, assuming I had a rare slot here, I would personally go with the Archangel Staff. Same as the Garen, you're able to refill your mana every single round, Round, which is even more better with the Lux because she is someone who is really spell based. Now in terms of common relics here, as I mentioned, Lost Chapter is pretty nice, allowing you to refill your spell mana whenever you summon the Lux. Spell Shield is also pretty decent because Lux is a fairly expensive unit and you are going to want to keep her alive as long as possible just to make sure you're able to generate enough final sparks to end the game. And as for the Grand Duelist Blade, I like Challenger on the Lux, especially when I first started playing her. It's pretty decent on the first turn because Lux is going to have the barrier when you summon her, allowing you to challenge and force the block from a really beefy enemy if you really need to. Moving on into Vayne now, once again, one of my favorite champions and one of the champions I covered in yesterday's video, Archangel Staff, Joking's Crown and Ginsu's Rage Blade is a no-brainer build on her. Archangel Staff, as I mentioned, is there so that we're able to get the tumble to be played on the first couple of turns, effectively allowing us to progress Vayne's level up a little bit faster. Having the Ginsu's Rage Blade will be good for Vayne because she's a champion that's going to want to attack as many times as possible. 
As a result, she's gonna get a crazy stat buff, and with the overwhelm from the Troking's crown, you're able to take advantage of that. Now, some relic alternatives here that I would recommend on the vein is a green lit shade leaf, corrupted star fragment, and a Loron blade rack. So the idea of the shade leaf and CSF combo, which is the more standard combo here in POC, is that you're able to grant the supported ally elusive, follow that up by using CSF to kill the supported ally, and then transferring the elusive and the stats back to the vein. Now, the reason why this is good is because the way it operates is that the shade leaf will transfer the elusive first, then the CSF will kick in, killing the supported ally and then transferring the elusive back. However, this is not the only good thing about this particular build. Having the CSF will also help you greatly because it will transfer the stats of the supported ally even though the supported ally had a stat boost from the equipment. For example, if the ally to Vayne's right has a plus one plus one from an equipment, that plus one plus one will also be transferred onto the Vayne. And once that ally is dead, said equipment will return back to your hand and as a result, nothing is wasted. You can effectively repeat this as many times as you can. Finally, Challenger is also pretty nice. That way you're able to fashion out better chances to attack, allowing you to attack with your Vayne really really safely. Now in terms of common relics here, I would personally recommend either a Rage Blade, a Storm Razor or the Troking's Crusher. Now the Rage Blade is practically a no-brainer item here on the Vayne because effectively you're able to attack and grant her stats. And since Vayne is all about attacking often, having multiple Rage Blades will actually help you out a lot. For example, I have three Rage Blades in total here in my inventory. Having all three will give me a plus three plus three whenever I attack and since Vayne is probably going to be attacking a lot of times, that's probably going to be a crazy amount of stats. However, if you want something a little bit more flexible in terms of giving you some good keywords, Storm Razor could be pretty good because they're able to attack safely with the Vayne courtesy of the quick attack. Troking's Crusher serves the same function as Troking's Crown. You're able to give the Vayne the overwhelm at the very least instead of your entire board. And there you have it guys, those are my suggested and alternative builds for all three Damascene champions here in Path of Champions. Now I'm pretty sure you guys have your own crazy builds out there comprising of a multi to the relics. I obviously cannot account for them all because there's just simply too many combinations to think about. However, if you do have something interesting, let me know down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well as your ideas. But anyway, that's it for now. So we are going to end things here. So if you enjoyed this short little video, consider leaving a like as well as subscribing to the channel. I really do appreciate that support, but most importantly, it's so that you don't miss future episodes or uploads of Legends of Runeterra or Path of Champions content just like this one. Either way, thank you guys for joining me as well as watching. This is Kevlar signing off. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.